Hello, I'm Bernard Hickey from interest.co.nz and welcome to another in our series of double shot interviews. This is where we buy a couple of cups of coffee and we sit down with someone who's got something interesting to say about <laughs> global markets or interest rates or economic policy or, or whatever. And today I've got here with me Chris Weston. Welcome to interest.co.nz. Thanks for having me. Chris is an institutional dealer at IG Markets in Melbourne. IG Markets have just launched here six months ago in New Zealand mm. and are a contracts for difference uh, operation. Mm. And so I wanted to get Chris in to ask about contracts for difference, what IG Markets is up to, what's, uh, what people are, are doing um, on, on this platform. Uh, Chris, uh, give us an idea of what IG Markets <coughs> have been doing in New Zealand and the background in Australia and in the UK. Well, we've been um, offering contracts for differences in the UK really for, for a number of years, since about 1974. Uh, we, we operate under the, the group IG Group, which are listed on the London Stock Exchange under the ticker IGG. Uh, we have a spread betting arm uh, and a CFD arm. In Australia, we've been uh, trading since around about 2002. We brought the product here, over here, whereas we're part of our sort of global expansion plan. Uh, and we've seen some fantastic demand over there. The, the, the sort of pickup rates has been has been fantastic and it's been great to see and really a number of our New Zealand clients uh, we're operating through the IG Markets Australia banner uh, and the platform there. So what we did, we, we've, we've seen a, a nice amount of demand over, over from New Zealand uh, but the problem with, with what those guys were experiencing was that they were having to hold everything in, in Australian dollars so you had the kind of currency, currency risk um, and we also know how, you know how volatile currencies have been recently so we've offered, um, we've brought a platform out here about, for about six months where we've offered New Zealand clients their own platform but also CFDs and contract for differences in, in New Zealand dollars as well so they don't have the currency risk going forward. Uh, we found about 90% of our clients over here have been currency traders um, but really that's what we've been doing uh, you know we've been offering for about six months the take-up rate's been very very good uh, they use them uh, contracts of differences for a number of different reasons um, and, and we found that the New Zealand population has been very very switched on very savvy so what is a contract for difference, if you had to describe it to someone off the street? Well, very, very plainly, I mean, it's just a, a leveraged or geared product, uh, be it on currencies, commodities, shares, indices, uh, even rates, where you're actually speculate, where, where you can actually hedge out an existing position or speculating on the future direction uh, of, a, of a different under, of the underlying asset, basically. So why would you use a con contract for difference rather than actually buying a currency or a stock in the market? Well, to buy actually a currency in the physical market is, is quite expensive. I mean, if you actually are looking to speculate or, or look at a future direction, uh, whether you be a, a short-term trader or even a medium-length trader, you, you probably want to do this via um, operating leverage. So CFD providers will offer you 100% uh, you know, leverage on that. So you, for a very small amount of money uh, or a margin, you can actually take out a much larger position. It obviously engages an, an element of risk involved. Uh, so, you know, certainly CFD providers should expose you or tell you about the risks that are involved with CFD trading. Um, but, you know, if you are a short-term trader, if you have a, a sort of short-term mindset in the, in the, in the, or have a, an opinion of where something's going to go in, you know, in a, generally a short-term position, uh, you would look to or you want to become an active trader. That's where CFDs really come into their own. Uh, if you think BHP, for example, on the, on, on the, uh, on the market is going to go down to, say, $36, one of the really good things about CFDs, be it on indices, currencies, anything like that, is that you can go long and you can also go short. You're not just stuck in a generic term where you're thinking, oh, I can only go one direction. Um, so there's, the, the, the flexibility uh, or the choice of different options that you can do with CFDs is, is very, very appealing to short-term traders. And there must be some people who think about hedging as well. Well, I think we've seen a, a huge uptick in, in hedging. Um, if you think, if you've got a, a physical portfolio of shares, now I'm going to use uh, a large portfolio of shares, say you've got a, a physical holding of about a million dollars worth of exposure across different asset classes, different stocks. Um, one of the good things is that you can hedge really, really well. Rather than sell out, which can be quite expensive to sell out, you might say to yourself, well, I think we're going to see a bit of volatility in the markets over the next six months, which, which obviously we have. Uh, but generally my bias is that we're going to see a bit of a correction, maybe down. I don't really want to sell out. So we actually offer indices, uh, and you can actually get match your exposure on the indices by basically how many you know, dollars per point I'm trading times by the current level, and that will give you your total exposure. And then you can basically work out how many contracts you need to sell and offset against your physical portfolio. So we've seen a, a big, big pickup in people looking to hedge 
their physical exposures uh, rather than actually selling out of their underlying portfolio, which is costly and can take quite a bit of time as well. So that's been quite a, a useful tactic in, in this quite volatile market at the moment. So what type of instruments, things are people uh, trading in the Australian market and in the New Zealand market? Well, it's an interesting question. I mean, in the, New, the, the New Zealand market and the Australian market are very different in terms of what people trade. In New Zealand, probably 90 95% of our clients trade currencies. Uh, the most popular ones um, are the euro dollar, they, love, they like cable, uh, and they also like dollar yen and, and the Aussie dollar. For some reason, they don't tend to trade the New Zealand dollar as much as they would do. But I think that's just the generic you know, cross-section of what people are doing in, in everyday society. You know, the Australia, the euro is the most traded currency. That's replicated over here. I mean, I think that's what we see. But in Australia, it's very much a you know, broad-based sort of spectrum. It's very much 50-50, you know, uh, lots of uh, business in currencies, uh, lots of business in shares as well. Um, and then they start getting into more sort of out there products, you know, trading interest rates on the Aussie market, uh, you know, looking at sort of things like gold. Um, commodities. There's been a lot of movement in commodities in the last um, couple of years. Can, what sort of commodities can you, can you trade? Well, you can trade pretty much anything you want. High-grade copper. Uh, you can trade some, some pretty uh, out there products, uh, lean hogs, for example. Um, gold, as I mentioned, silver. Fat hogs? Sorry? Fat hogs? <laughs> oh, no, well, it's not something I get. I, I just think we do lean hogs. Sure. <laughs> right. okay. um, but yeah, I mean, you can pretty much do most commodities. I, I, can't, give you the, I can't give you the exact number, but uh, generally with CFD traders, they like to trade news events. So if gold comes in the news, which it does generally when it's making new highs, when we saw it trading around 1,265, it was pretty much front page news. Everyone was getting, gold, getting into gold. Uh, and then it sort of comes out of gold. Everyone sort of, you know, so you see, generally see a pickup in, in the demand for these underlying assets when it becomes in the news. CFD traders aren't news traders. If BHP comes out of a great earnings announcement, you generally see that front page news and the CFD traders will generally trade that because that's where the volatility is. That's where the short term movements are. Um, but I think the view in our clients at the moment in terms of gold is, is one quite neutral. I think a lot of my clients, some of the bigger ones are saying, well, if we break through 1,265, that would be a quite bullish sign. So we look to sort of resume a long position again, but it has held an uptrend. So I think most people are quite neutral and playing a sort of range at the moment. And I think that's sort of fundamental or, or thematic of what we're actually seeing in the underlying market, where it seems to sort of be bouncing around. What's the um, protections for people who are trading through um, IG markets or any other um, uh, CFD trader to make sure that their money doesn't um, go off in a puff of smoke <laughs> when the brokerage collapses or, or, or whatever, as we've seen in Australia with Opus Prime and Sonray and, and the likes. So what happens to people's cash? Where does it sit? Well, it's an interesting question, um, uh, and it's certainly something that has been in the news uh, quite a lot at the moment. There's been a, a recent report, I'm sure you know, from ASIC, uh, the, the Australian regulator, um, look, I, think, I think it's something that you do need to address if you are a client. You know, who are you dealing with? Uh, and you've got to make sure that you know you're top dealing with, if you are trading contracts with differences, that you're trading with a top tier firm uh, without sort of, you know, giving IG a massive uh, spin off. Uh, you know, we're a, a, list, a FTSE listed company. You know, all our financials are out there in the public domain for people to see. But in terms of what, where clients' funds can go, and I think this is probably one of the most important things at the moment is, you know, one, are you getting a segregated account? But also, if that is segregated, and most CFD providers will offer a segregated account, what can they physically do with that money? Is it pulled together and then is that funds used to pay margin accounts for brokers and, and looking at the, paying off brokers' positions? Uh, you know, what happens if the broker collapses themselves, the underlying broker, they've got your money, you've lost that money. What happens if one big client potentially goes belly up? You know, he's, he could take the rest of that margin as well. So I think you want to you ask yourself, have I got a segregated account? But secondly, what, are the, what physically can, those, can, the, can the broker do with it? Do they use that client money to, to pay off margin positions? Uh, at IG, we don't actually do that. We actually use our own funds. We've actually got a big surplus cash position, no net debt, um, and uh, you know, we use our own money to pay off brokers. So I think that's something that, you know, if IG markets you know, were to go belly up, which is, is, is very, very unlikely, uh, you know, clients would get their, their money that they held with us back, which is quite important. And the issue of regulation of CFD providers, I understand there's been some, some noise around that in Australia in the last few months. 
Well, that's right. Um, uh, you know, we've been working very closely with ASIC on the back of that as well, uh, just to make sure that the industry is, is brought up to speed. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it, it's a question of, you know, are clients educated? Uh, and we've gone out of our way to, to really ramp up the, uh, the education side, you know, providing, you know, different education programs, webinars for clients to be able to be educated. We actually reject something like 10, 15 percent of our clients through lack of understanding of the product. So we want to make sure that our clients know what they're doing, the risks that are rolled in CFDs. So because, you know, at the end of the day, if clients make money, you know, we actually hedge out the positions as well. So we're, everyone's sort of, you know, happy at the end of the day. So we, we kind of actively make sure that clients are understanding the product and, uh, and, and using them as effectively as they can. Great to have you in here at interest.co.nz, Chris. Um, and welcome to New Zealand, by Thanks the way. Thanks, 